Welcome to the Shai P Show. Today is the 7th day of December of 2017. I'm your host, Dr. Peter K.B. St. Jean, right here on 1309 South Wood Avenue in Chicago at Can TV. It's a pleasure for me to be there. This show is brought to you by the Peaceful World Movement, the Shai P Show. This is a live call-in show at 312-738-1060. Uh, today, I am going to be in studio alone, but I will have a couple phone guests, hopefully, if they, uh, if, if they call in, uh, as I imagine they will. And one of them, I'm actually going to go to a, a clip um, here in a minute um, of uh, Afra Stringer and, uh, and, and, and Dirk Acklin uh, of Chicago. We will be, uh, Afra Stringer, Bo, as is known, we will be, we'll be, talking, uh, we'll be uh, talking with us today. So I'm looking forward to talk to him about this issue. Um, I want to welcome um, our engineer today, Molly. Molly McCabe. Molly, Molly. Well, he's not online. She's not here with me, but she's in the back. Hopefully someday she'll make it to the front line of the show. She's still a little bit shy. But um, Molly was among among those of us who went down to the kidder uh, a couple weeks ago on the 15th of, of November to uh, the 17th of November, 2017, where we presented a lot of our work on Better News Research. And one of the topics of Better News Research was the subject that we call a word that you've heard me speak about here on this show called recidivism. You know, recidivism is when someone goes to prison, comes out and reoffends and goes back in. But the term decivism, you know, when someone goes to prison and does not reoffend, what is the word for that? You know, we, we, we didn't even know what that really is. I mean, there's the assistance in crime. We can say that they're not reoffending. But the question is, what is the term? Well, I've coined a term called decidivism, uh, which is when someone goes to prison and comes out but does not reoffend. And the question is, what are some of the things that drive and that are able to cultivate this issue of decidivism? So we'll be speaking of Alpha Stringer uh, in a few minutes, uh, who uh, should be calling in, um, but we'll watch a, a short video that he and uh, Bo put together about this issue of a paradigm shift from a culture of violence to a culture of peace. Um, I also want to give acknowledgement to a fallen brother, Wadada, Eddie James of Dominica, who was unfortunately murdered in his community of Silver Lake. He was a frontline worker uh, with me and uh, with... Gloria Walsh and, and uh, Miss Nanton, Andrew Nanton and others where we worked with the youth in Silver Lake and in different parts of Dominica and unfortunately uh, I, I murdered not too long ago and he had his funeral was there and his children, um, his, his, his common law wife, um, Esther and his, his various children that we work with in our program, our hearts are just so laden um, with, with, with his death and um, as he's been referred to in this community as a legend, sometime in the future we'll talk about what is the legend of Wadada. And for those of you who follow me on Facebook, uh, you will see that I wrote a piece um, about uh, if Wadada's death was not in vain, where is the evidence? Um, hopefully we will, um, we will speak some more about Wadada on the show. But as we talk about the cynicism here, I want you to watch this clip that I'm going to show you um, that relates to here in Chicago, Bo and Dirk making peace profitable. Let's watch this for a minute. I'm not sure if we have the audio. Um, I'm not sure if the audio is coming through. I'm not hearing it on this end. Is the audio, Molly, can you hear the audio on the other side? We can't hear the audio. All right, so I will go ahead and I will, I will go back live and maybe the technicians can check this and see if somehow they can give us, um, get, give us some audio. Um, apparently our audio effect is not coming through here. So I will, um, hopefully they'll be able to uh, to, to, to address that for us. Uh, meanwhile, I will queue up um, another, another video and see if we are able to, to hear this. Um, I also bring students uh, from, from um, I also bring students from Chicago out in the field, nothing. Um, and this is uh, one of the pieces. No, we will go back and see. Uh, we will try. We probably we have some technical issues that prevent enough our audio from coming through. But um, soon we will have a call in from um, from Afa Stringer uh, and who will be discussing with us issues that are relevant to recidivism. When people go to prison and they come out and they do not reoffend or they are not they are not found to reoffend, what are some of the factors that help to determine their ability to stay out of prison? 
Um, and we will, we will hopefully hear that from Arthur Stringer. Our technicians are working to see if I can get some audio sounds here because we want to show um, some, of, some of the factors uh, that are relevant to uh, visiting the, the south side of Chicago and speaking with persons like Alpha Stringer to learn more about these issues. You know, Chicago oftentimes people, when people hear that I'm a professor in, in Chicago and we live in the city, people sometimes wonder what it's like to live in the city that some have referred to as one of the high crime areas. Uh, one of the right high crime settings um, with different areas accounting for more crime than others. Uh, and one of the things that um, I see through my classes is when I take students to the field, they, their life practically change. Um, yesterday we were having a, a deep discussion with one of our students in Chicago that actually had this type of experience. But meanwhile, I already have a caller, so I'm going to go online and call her. Thank you so much for calling. Thank you for calling the Shy Peace Show, brought to you by the Peaceful World Movement. What's your question or your comment? Yeah, this is uh, Advisor Bo out of Chicago. Hey, Advisor Bo, how are you, man? Thanks for calling in. Yes, sir. How yeah. you doing? Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you for calling in. You know, Bo, um, I know that if you were able to be here in studio with me, you would have been so. Um, you, we have uh, uh, viewers um, um, watching our show and persons who will be able to see it live on, on, on uh, see it on, on playback online later on. Bo, we are discussing this issue of decidivism. And before the show, I spoke to you about the fact that the, the, the concept of recidivism is something that most of us, including you, are familiar with. The idea when someone goes to prison, that they come out and they reoffend and they get locked up again, right? Yeah, um, right. But when someone comes out of prison and they, does, and they do not reoffend, that person does not reoffend again, we hardly have terms for that. Well, I've coined a term called decidivism, uh, which is the, the ability of people to come out after incarceration and not return for a long period of time, hopefully forever. Um, and, and I know you're one of those. You're one of those decidivists, right? Um, so if you care to share um, with the audience why you qualify as a decidivist, someone who has spent time in prison, come out, and has been out for some considerable time, do you mind sharing with our viewers who you are and how you qualify to speak on the subject? Yes, sir. Well, uh, they call me advisor Bo. I'm actually uh, one of the original leaders of the Disciple Nation out of Chicago, Illinois. And the reason that I can speak on recidivism is because of uh, my life experience going in and out of jail when we talk about recidivism. I was one of those persons. And for years, I went in and out of prison. I get out after three years and go back within two to three months and then get out again in three to four or five years and go right back. Mm. So what I had to learn was the way to get past recidivism was that I had to get go on the other side of 360. 360 is a degree of knowledge and the terms is, it's, it's like going around in a circle. It's a complete circle. The other side of 360 is 180. And that's changing your thought pattern. That's, that's actually changing you. So I had to understand that in order for me to stop going to prison, I had to change the way I think or the way that I do business day to day. And, and that's what it took for me. That's why today I live a life of dissidivism, where I don't have to go back and forth in the prison. I'm trying to teach and educate young brothers today that's going in and out of the system how not to even enter the system and know to come out, how to stay out, out of the system, mm -hmm. you know. And, it, and it, it's all centered around changing your mindset. Once you change your mindset, then there's nothing you can't do. Mm -hmm. But the thought, thought is the cause of everything that we do in life. Anything, every action proceeds a thought, you know. And, and, and that's what we have to learn that you know, the act of robbing is not the physical act, but it's the mental thought that precedes the act. Mm -hmm. You know, you can rob somebody in your thoughts way before you actually rob somebody physically. So, Bo, uh, so Bo, you are saying that, and for those of you, this is advisable, the gentleman with the white shirt on the right, on the 
I guess the right side of the screen here, Bo, I'm just showing you on YouTube uh, the interview with you and, and Dirk. This is advisor Bo uh, here. So, so Bo, so if I understand you correctly, you are saying that your ability to be out, to stay out of, of jail for of prison for this period of time since your last bid has been associated with a, a switch in the way that you're thinking. Is that right? Most definitely. Let me tell me this, Bo. When last were you incarcerated? Uh, I, I come home out of uh, the federal prison system in 2012. 2012. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, uh, yes, uh, 2012 is when um, he, uh, Bo is indicating that he um, came out of prison, uh, 2012 up to 2017. Uh, let me remind you that you are on uh, your, you are looking at the Shai P show. Um, I'm your host, Dr. Peter K.B. St. Jean. We have Arthur Stringer, advisor Bo, uh, who is on the phone with us, and we are uh, discussing the subject of dissidivism. Uh, and which is the, the ability of people to be in prison and to come out and to not uh, re-offend. Uh, uh, here again on, on the Shai P Show. Uh, it's a live call-in show that we are here. We have a few more shows for the year. Uh, we come on at 5.30 p.m. on uh, 5.30 p.m. on Thursdays at 5.30 until about 5.55. And we talk about issues that are relevant to make it to create a more, to a more peaceful Chicago. The Shai Peace Show is brought to you by the Peaceful World Movement. We are located at 11451 South Michigan Avenue on the south side of Chicago. You can reach us at 716-603-0992, or you can reach us at www.shypeace.org. And we are very interested in, in, in subject matters that, that, that relate to creating uh, a more peaceful Chicago. And as I said, we are talking now to Advisor Bo, and you saw Advisor Bo here. He's on the one online that we'll be, we are discussing with. So, Bo, what exactly is it about the, the nature of your mindset, the things that you really had to change uh, in order to stay out of prison uh, for this last five years that you've been out? Well, what it, what it is is that, you know, I've always been involved in various criminal activities throughout Chicago because that's where I was born and raised mm -hmm. and I became a part of street organizations mm -hmm. Today people like to label the organizations as gangs, but they're not gangs to me. It's a way of life It's an organization and I was a part of that, you know growing up as a kid So I took on different Characteristics and wore different hats in the street. Mm -hmm. So I was acting out doing various criminal activities and so forth you know, the desire to change was in 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 the latter years of uh, uh, doing a bit in the feds, I kept watching Chicago and I looked at the increase in violence in the street. And I looked at the fact that I was a leader. And as a leader, I contributed to the growth and development of this violence that was going on in the streets of Chicago. Mm -hmm. So I said that because I had children and they were uh, being raised and turned, turned into this violence, I had to change the way that I thought, mm -hmm. the way that I did business day to day in order to change the conditions in Chicago. So the change started with myself. Mm -hmm. That's why I take a position that I do today in advocating change when it comes to the streets of Chicago. Yeah, you know? but we want to play a clip. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it. It's Don Dirk Listen Dirk. to this clip. And um, I've been a member of the Disciple Nation for a long time. And I was doing um, wrong things and getting money other than the right way. So through um, Dr. Peter St. John, with the tools he given me, it's steering me away from continually trying to get money from the violence that I once um, indulged in to um, a peaceful transition. What me and my advisor has been doing is creating little cleanup jobs, whatever we can um, move them um, towards to keep them out of harm's way and um, stop the violence and promote more peace to make it profitable. Yeah, my name is uh, Advisor Bo. I'm advising 
uh, Don Dirk, I am also a disciple. You know, I, I often live a life of violence, and uh, due to what's going on in the city of Chicago, because of the concept of making peace profitable, because Doc gave me that knowledge, we're able to put it in practice, and it's happening all over the United States. People is gravitating toward this peace concept. This is the real demographic. This is the real reality of what tomorrow looks like. We don't have to keep on buying into the belief that violence is profitable. This, this is the only thing we have. No, it isn't. I'm advisor Bone, and I prescribe to this economy of making peace profitable, and I invite each and every one of y'all to sign on to. Bo, were you able to hear some of that? Yeah, I heard it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. T t thanks for, for sitting in the studio uh, and do that. So you, you, you're talking here in this, in this short piece about changing your mindset from uh, living a lifestyle that made violence profitable to changing your mindset to now living a lifestyle that would make peace profitable. When you say that in the video, what do you really mean? What I mean is simply that you know, the only counter to violence is peace. You know, peace, I mean, violence right now is an economy onto itself. Mm. They're making a lot of money off of violence. You know, and when I say they, I'm talking about the powers that be. They're making a lot of money off of violence. You know, so the question, the biggest question and the elephant in the room is simply this. Mm. Do we want the violence to stop? For those that's profiting from it, the answer is simply no. No, it's not profitable to them to stop the violence. So they they create the conditions in our community that yield these results. You know, and as long as they keep us dummy down and sleep off of the different drugs and stuff that they put putting into our community, make it available and accessible to our youth, then they will stay dummy down off of lean, molly, Xanaxes, and all these different psychosomatic drugs, you know, and then here they got access to guns that police don't have access to, you know. So with, with, with them ingredients, you know, and, and, and an idle mind, they say the devil works out there, what comes out of it? Blood violence. So with us and the movement that we're, 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 we're creating is simply the same. We know that the only way to stop violence is to create a venue by which we can increase the peace, you know, and make peace profitable, you know, because you have more people in the world that don't, that don't perpetrate violence than you do that do perpetrate violence. The, the violence that we're looking at, the society plays up or the news media plays up and blows out of proportion and make it seem like it's bigger than what it is. And it's really not. You have people that's a part of these street organizations or gangs that's not violent, that's not even perpetrating violence. It's, a, it's a, like a, for, 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 uh, what is it they call the uh, sorority. They're part of, you know, it's a way of life. You know, it's, it's not about the violence. It's about being connected to something, belonging to something, you know, that you're not getting at home. Right. And, and that's what people can gravitate toward. So, yes. yeah, we understand that moving forward, the only way to change the conditions we find ourselves in in Chicago and all over the United States is to change our mindset and then create a venue by which to make peace profitable. Thank you, Bo. Uh, Bo, um, um, and, you know, callers, again, this is a live call-in show. We have more than one line, so even if Bo is online, you can still call, and Molly will put you through. If you have to, uh, if you want to ask Bo a question, I don't know about the technology there, if you can even hear a question and answer a question, but we're going to test it out to see. Uh, 3127 381 And, Bo, you remember one time we went to Country Kitchen number 2, and we, we had some students. You probably don't remember one time. There are many times that we did this. And sometimes yeah. when we were there, we had some testimonials from some of the students that I want to share with some of our viewers. Chance to go to college, to even complete high school, which is something they they didn't because of their circumstances. Um, and it's kind of inspiring because because despite all the things that they went through, they're still trying to go back and create a new life for themselves and uh, for their future. So it was really it was really good talking with them. The media 
portrays the South Side as um, a dangerous place. And when I was there, I didn't see any danger. So these people are in the inner city and they are struggling to survive because of the systematic injustice going on. I didn't really see gang activity, I guess. Because a lot of people will tell you, you know, that's really not a safe place to go um, without really having any knowledge of it. It's understandable if they make mistakes, but, you know, when we were talking to um, Bo and all the other gentlemen, they, they showed that they really want to make a difference for the better in the world and, like, change stereotypes and how people, how, like, outsiders see this outside. Yes, that was, yes, Bo, we just saw, we were just listening to some clips. You remember this young people coming down? Let me ask you this, Bo, we're winding up here. We have, we have five minutes or so to go, uh, or maybe about three, four more minutes. Um, what type of, of ad advice do you have for, uh, for other young men or women who are probably, that probably just got out of prison and are trying to make it at least to you to five years? I know you never want to go back. But what kind of advice do you have for persons as we wind up in about in about a minute that you can say uh, for them to stay out of the life of crime and, and continue a life of peace on the streets? Uh, I, would simply, I would simply say connect with uh, yourself and, 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 and the Stop Peace movement because seriously, I mean, the programs in which you got in place is geared toward uh, the city rhythm stopping the recidivism that's, that's being perpetrated throughout these uh, cities and, and the, uh, uh, in the United States. I mean, seriously, once people can understand that they got a, a, a opposite to the way they think, you know, then they can start changing it. Because what we have to understand today they have removed all the social programs within our community. Hey, Bo, hey, Bo, uh, Bo we, have, we have a caller. If you don't, you don't mind sharing the air a little bit, let's try this out and see if you can hear a caller. We'll talk to a caller. Caller, thank you so much for joining Bo and I on the Shai P Show. What's your com comment or question? Okay, well, uh, first I want to say it has been a joy uh, listening uh, to Bo and the things he's had to say about his experience. So my question is for Bo, that since you have adopted this, uh, new uh, mindset, as you said. Um, can you just share with us at least one profound thing you have felt has happened in your life since you've become a part of the Peaceful World Movement? Thank Good question. Boy, you heard the question? Uh, could, you, could you repeat the question? Yeah, I will, I will summarize it for you. She said that since you have changed the mindset, what concrete thing that you have done to help make peace profitable in your life? In my life, yes. Uh, well, one of one of the things that I've done was I started an organization called Developer Dreams, and that organization deal with the recidivism of men and women coming in and out of prison. Mm -hmm. Not only that, I uh, was able to organize most of the street organizations within the city of Chicago as well as throughout the United States. And right now, we're moving towards stopping a lot of the violence that's plaguing not only Chicago, but all the major cities throughout the United States. Well, that is a very profound uh, response. Uh, we have to wrap up now um, in, in this last minute. Um, Bo, uh, I want to thank you for, for joining. Caller, thank you very much for calling in. Uh, Caller, if you ever visit uh, our Peace Palace at 11451 South Michigan Avenue, in fact, Bo and his team are the ones who cleaned out the mold from the building, and the ones, the major ones that we work with, uh, are members of the street organizations, uh, to help um, uh, change the paradigm around from a, a, a culture of violence and economy of violence to a culture and, and an economy of peace. I want to thank everybody for watching. Dr. Peter K.B. St. Jean right here on Can TV. Uh, join us next week. We will have Provost Michael Emerson, who's the Provost of North Park University. He's going to be joining us, and he'll be telling about, well, us about his work in, 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 in Denmark. He'll be uh, in Copenhagen, and he'll be talking about his own. He, he did an interview of a Shy Peace documentary. He'll be telling what a Provost is and some of the future things that you expect to see from North Park University as we engage in Catalyst 606. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.